We often refer to Shakespeare as the English, and Shakespeare was a very influential and important English author, playwright. And in fact, a lot of English idioms and phrases come from Shakespeare. Very innovative. And if you hear people say, "I love Shakespeare," I, <laughs> I'm not saying you shouldn't believe them, but I don't. <laughs> My theory is that. People say they like Shakespeare or they like some specific quotes, but they wouldn't actually enjoy sitting down and watching a whole play. I have. I've sat down in a theater and watched several Shakespeare plays, and I didn't enjoy any of them. Why? Because the language is so hard. I have to constantly concentrate, focus on what are they saying. Why? Well, because languages change over time. Every language changes over time. And the language of the Shakespearean era, that period of time, is different from modern English. It's not that I don't understand it. It's not that I can't understand it. It's that it takes concentration, right? And some parts of scenes in Shakespeare are more or less difficult. What we're going to do is look at a scene and then pull out the English meaning from it. I want to see if you understand what. They are saying, speaking English, but can you understand what they're saying? Let's see, and we'll talk about a few phrases that may still be in usage. There are many phrases that we still use, but they're often used in the context of a modern sentence rather than in the context of a Shakespearean sentence, right? Okay, so let's watch. We're going to watch a short clip from the Royal Shakespeare Company, and then. We're going to dissect each line. We're going to talk about what each line means. So see how much you can understand. Are you ready? Lord, put your discourse into some frame and start not so wildly from my affair. I'm tame, sir. Pronounce. The queen, your mother, in most great affliction of spirit, hath sent me to you. You are welcome. Nay, good my lord, this courtesy is not of the right breed. Ah. If it shall please you to make me a wholesome answer, I will do your mother's hmm. commandment. If not, your pardon and my return shall be the um, good, my oops. lord. This courtesy is not of the right breed. Ah. If it shall please you to make me a wholesome answer, I will do your mother's commandment. If not, your pardon and my return shall be the end of business. My mother, you said. Okay, I will、right, we'll、watch it again by the end, but I want to see how much you understand. I want to go through it. Part by part, ask yourself: How much did I get? Do I understand what's going on in this scene? If you understand everything, well, well done, congratulations. I have to look at these very carefully and try to understand the context and what's going on to understand. It's difficult. Okay, so let's let's look at these. So you have these two characters. You have、uh, you have Hamlet. He's the main character. That's the guy in the dinosaur costume. He's the main character of that play. The play is called Hamlet. And the other one is Guildenstern, and Guildenstern is, well, it's sort of a, I believe a character that is delivering a message from Hamlet's mother to him, right?、In、the original Shakespeare actually,、uh, Guildenstern is a man, and you might have you might have caught caught one reference to that, but、uh, in this version, it's the Guildenstern is played by a female. Okay, so let's go through the phrases here. We have. Good, my lord. Put your discourse into some frame and start not so wildly from my affair. Okay, what is going on here? Start not so wildly from my affair. My affair. What is going on there? Well, let's say, good, my lord. My lord is a reference to this person's title. So my lord is a royalty of some kind. Okay, so we know that that's that's Hamlet. She's talking to Hamlet. Okay. Good, my lord. Put your discourse into some frame. Now, how is how is he acting in that scene? He's kind of acting crazy, right? He's screaming. He's banging on the drum. So actually, she's saying, "What you're saying, kind of control yourself, please, or stay on the subject, or don't get distracted, or maybe stop fooling around, right?" It's sort of like saying, "Control, control yourself, <laughs> stay on topic," okay? And start not so wildly from my affair. This is actually 
simpler than it looks. My affair is just what I'm talking about, what I've what I've come here to talk with you about. That's my affair. My affair is what I'm doing, the reason that I'm here. Start not so wildly is don't react so strongly and in such a crazy way. You don't need to be so shocked by by me being here and needing to talk to you about something. You don't need to react so strongly. Notice he's being kind of kind of crazy, right, as she as she approaches. Okay. Now again, we'll watch it again, but let's go through let's go through the phrases first. So how does he respond? He says, I am tame, sir, pronounce. I am tame, sir, pronounce. Now, Sir would be the reference to Guildenstern originally as a male character, but here played by a female character. I am tame, sir. That means okay, I'm I'm under control now. I'll be a, I'll be good. I'll be okay. That means I know you think I'm not going to react well to what you're saying. I know that you think I'm going off off topic. I know that you think I'm not taking you seriously, but okay, I am under control. I will be good. I will be okay. It's fine. Pronounce means then say what you want to say. Tell me what you want to say. So so then she's going to say what she wants to say. All right. So do we actually use I'm tame? I'm tame. Uh, probably not. Sometimes we say, oh, he or she, they're so tame. That means reserved, calm, under control, right? Okay. You can use that by itself. But again, in the context, usually, of a modern English sentence. Now let's let's go on here. She then says, "The queen your mother in most great affliction of spirit hath sent me to you." All right, so he's my lord because he's the queen's son, all right? He's royalty. The queen your mother in most great affliction of spirit. Okay. So if I say in a bad mood, you understand what that means that I'm not happy, I'm upset about something. So we're using in here in the same way. In most great affliction of spirit here means in a lot of stress or worry, she's upset. Okay? All this means is your mom is upset. <laughs> That's what it means. Hath sent me to you. This is a way to say has. We do not use hath anymore. You will not hear any modern sentence that uses hath ever, 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 ever. But you see it a lot in Shakespeare. Your mother, who's very upset, has sent me to you or sent me here. Your mother is angry and she sent me here. Your mother is very upset and she sent me here. That's really all that that this character is saying. Your mother, the queen, is upset and that's why I'm here. Okay. So he's saying, go ahead, say what you want to say. Then she's saying, your mom sent me here. She's very upset. Good. Now, what's the next part? You are welcome. Now, notice how he said that, though. Is he being serious? Is he taking her seriously? He said, I'm tame, sir. Pronounce. That means, hey, I'm under control. I'm taking this seriously, right? Go ahead. What do you want to say? But then when he says, you are welcome, the way that he says it, you can tell. And this is where it comes down to the performance, right? It's like saying, yeah. It's good to have you here. It's good that you're here. Um, it's nice to see you. Something like that, right? But the way that he says it is kind of sarcastic. Like he's not taking her seriously. Like he's more focused on what he was doing before. Which is he's coaching some actors on a play that they're doing within the play. So in fact, he said, I'm, okay, go ahead. What do you want to say? And then she says, oh, your mother sent me. And he said, oh, welcome. It's great, great that you're here in a kind of silly way to say to her, I'm saying what you want me to say, but you can see from my body language and the way that I say it that <laughs> I'm just goofing around. I'm not taking you seriously. I'm not listening carefully. Okay, so you have to kind of get that from the context. Then the last part, nay, my lord, Rather, nay, good my lord, this courtesy is not of the right breed. If it shall please you to make me a wholesome answer, I will do your mother's commandment. If not, your pardon and my return shall be the end of business. Now, this might sound pretty complicated, but she's really saying, no, this courtesy is not of the right sort. So she's noticing his reaction, that he's not taking her seriously and saying, 
listen, you're not taking me seriously. You're goofing around. You're clearly being sarcastic. You're clearly uh, uh, not staying on the topic, not on the point that we're talking about, right? You're be you're saying polite words, but it's it's being silly. It's sarcastic, right? And it's not what you really mean. And I can see that. Okay, breed not of the right breed. Breed is sort of like a kind category or sort, right? If it shall please you to make me a wholesome answer, this just means. If you want to answer me, seriously, if you want to give me a correct answer, an honest answer, a good answer, that's all she's saying. Wholesome here doesn't mean wholesome like we use it. Wholesome is typically used to say something is uh, uh, moral or ethical, right? Here it's more like give me a serious answer. Stop fooling around. Stop goofing around. And if you could do that and give me, give me what I want, which is why I'm here, then I'll go. Right? If it shall please you to make me a wholesome answer, I will do your mother's commandment. If not, if you're not willing to take me seriously, if you're not willing to, uh, to be serious here, then your pardon and my return shall be the end of business. Basically then, sorry, I will leave. I'm going. I'm going to go. Now you might say, did everybody talk like that back then? No. This is a kind of special speech, even in Shakespeare's time. People weren't talking just like this. He was an innovator of his day. So even then it was kind of special and unique. Now it was much more like that then than it is now. So they would have been able to quite easily understand the plays. Now we have to really concentrate. And so I, I sort of challenge you to next time you hear someone say I love Shakespeare to say what do you love about Shakespeare? Do you like the do you like the uh, the quotes? Or do you actually like sitting down and watching Shakespeare? I like some of the quotes, but I've never enjoyed Shakespeare. And maybe that's just me, but I think it's more people than you might than you might think. Listening to or watching a whole play is very tiring, in my opinion. All right, let's watch it one more time. Now that we've gone through the basic meanings, the general ideas of what they're saying to each other, let's see if we can understand it a little bit better, okay? Put your discourse into some frame and start not so wildly from my affair. I'm tame, sir, pronounce. The queen, your mother, in most great affliction of spirit, hath sent me to you. You are welcome. Okay, good, my lord, this See how he's being goofy there? He's using the dinosaur head to give a serious answer, but actually he's clearly not taking her seriously. He's kind of goofing around. To see is not of the right breed. Oh. If it shall please you to make me a wholesome answer, I will do your mother's commandment. If not, your pardon and my return shall be the end of business. My mother, you the said. end of business. All right, so that's it. I would challenge you to find some Shakespeare quotes that you like, and also, as I said, challenge people who say they love Shakespeare to uh, <laughs> think about whether or not they actually like Shakespeare. That's what I do when I hear people say, I love Shakespeare so much. All right, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget, forget to subscribe, of course, and also check out my full courses in the links in the description. Mm -hmm.